Hello, everyone. This is Solomon of Blockmatics, and I'm going to give you here just a quick intro into SmartPy, which is a new smart contract language for Tezos. Uh, it's not really a new language, but rather it's a Python library that you can use to write smart contracts, which is understood. It's compiled down into Mickelson, which is understood by the Tezos virtual machine. Uh, so if you're familiar with Python, this will be very easy for you to pick up. Uh, this one is really just an intro video, so uh, we're just going to go over some some of the basics, and you can see what it looks like. Uh, you can go to smartpie.io, it gives you also a nice overview, a couple of really great Medium posts on it. And what is really cool that the this group, Smart Chain Arena, uh, what they had built is also an online editor. So you have an IDE that you can use to write and and run and test your code. Uh, if you go to smartpie.io slash demo. And I'm really just going to jump right into it and just to show you what the code looks like. And in the future, we'll get into more technicals and then build something a bit more involved. So at the very first line over here, we're just importing that smartpie library. And we have a short class called simple operations. Uh, has an initialization function, and it also has a simple set function where we're just going to store a simple variable to whatever it is that we're passing out, we're passing in into by the um, with the parameters. Uh, you can see over here also on line seven that we describe that this function um, is an entry point, so that it can be called from. I mean, this is where the uh, our smart contract can be called. And which is something that we do in our test. So we define a test down here on line 13, and we have our testing function, where which is just going to test this set operation. So you can see at first on line 19, we are creating an object of our class, and um, so that's that's our contract essentially. And we are now calling the set operation with number nine over here and the number 17. What you'll also notice is we have the ability to just convert this uh, contract or an object of this contract into a nice HTML um, format. So we de define this HTML string over here where we keep appending our contract object uh, converted into HTML. And you can see what this actually looks like when we print this out. So we set output HTML, and now we can run this. At the top, you can see that you can either run the script, you can run it with the tests. And here is the output. We are, in the first case, our object, we're passing in, in the number nine. It shows you what, what operands are, you know, what parameters are being passed around, and then also the variable in our smart contract. And then, of course, at the second round, it's 17. Um, we're going to add a few more functions into our smart contract. So we could do, let's say, something like multiply. And we will just say our stored value now is, we'll multiply it by whatever we input. And Just call multiply, let's say with the number two. And here we get the number 34, 17 times two. You can also, by the way, write this shorthand. You can do star equals for a shorthand of multiply. Um, similarly, you could do the same with divide. So let's switch this to divide and we'll do forward slash equals, and down here, we're going to divide. And look what happens if we were to try to divide by zero. Of course, this should give us an error. And indeed, we get a division by zero error. So what we can do is we can have a condition over here and say sp.verify allows us to just put in some conditions that we want to be true, and we want our operand params dot 
op to be greater than zero. And in this case too, it won't run, but at least it will just um, you know, tell us what, what condition we failed at. And if we were to say, I'm gonna divide by five, so now the output should be six, because we're doing 34 divided by five, and the remainder is just ignored. And we can do, well, let's demonstrate doing a for loop. So let's say we'll do a factorial. So factorial. And we're just going to add up all the numbers. We're just going to set our, reset the stored value. We're going to start at one. And we want to now run a loop, so sp.4. So you can see all the constructs that are using the, uh, the SmartPy library, we do sp. Dot. So, so 4x in a range uh, starting from 1 until our input. Uh, actually, we have to do plus 1 because it won't be inclusive. And we are now going to say, our stored value, we're going to multiply it by x. And that should give us all the numbers. And then right, let's do factorial. Right, let's say factorial of 11. I'll run that. And factorial of 11 is 39,916,800. Okay, let's just do one more, just to demonstrate maybe some other variables that you can use or other data types rather that you can have in SmartPy. So up here at the very top on line five, we initialize just an integer stored value. We can have a Boolean that let's say we'll call that flag is false. And we can also do a double array and initialize that to, you know, let's just say it's a bunch, it's, let's say a two dimensional array, three by three. That's just a bunch of zeros. And when we run this, now, you can see any, every time we print out the our object, it shows us what that double array and the flag is. Over here, obviously, the flag is always false, but we can now switch it if we'd like to, let's just say, um, have a function called flip flag. Doesn't take any parameters, doesn't pass in any parameters, and here we'll just say call this flag and to do the negation is the tilde sign And that's it. So if we run this now, that should give us true down here the last at the last run right here. Now our flag is true. Um, and that's about it. So this is just a little view into this really cool new new um, library. And we're going to get more into this in a future session and we'll start building some more useful contracts.